public defender is an attorney employed by the community and responsible for giving legal aid without cost to any person who seeks it and is financially unable to employ private counsel. It is his duty to defend those accused of crime until the issue is decided in the court of law. The first public defender's office in the United States was opened in January 1913. Over the years, other offices were opened. And today, that handful has grown to a network, a network of lawyers cooperating to protect the rights of our clients. Motorists are constantly warned about the dangers of picking up hitchhikers. These dangers apply to both the motorist and the hitchhiker. Thanks. You're welcome. How far are you going? To the airport. Oh, that's great. I can get a bus there. Well, you won't be asleep yet. Is that your girl? Uh, I'm an old married man. Going to be a papa. Wonderful. When? A couple of months. How long are you home for? Just a couple of weeks. Then I'm shipping out to Japan. Going to take your wife? Mm. Maria wants to have the baby in this country. She had a rough deal when she was a kid. She's from Czechoslovakia. Threw her in a concentration camp when she was 13. She says she ain't taking any chance with our boy. He's going to be born here, being a 100% U.S. citizen. You said boy. We already decided. Oh, I see. When's your plane? 11 o'clock. Where are you going? Chicago. Chicago, huh? I was there once. It's cold. Hey, miss. That's the way to the airport. I've got to return the car. It's rented. Pick the name for the baby? Christopher Angelo Macosta. You like it? But suppose it's a girl. Suppose there's an accident. You know, it could happen. We'll call her Maria and hope it looks like her instead of me. She's real pretty. Show you. Yeah, that's her. She drew it herself. She's a good drawer. She made that one of me. She is good. I'll drop you off at the bus station. Well, that'll be swell. Thanks a lot. Hi, Sparky. Hello, honey. Ten dollars, right? You can still borrow the car for free. One date, one car. Where are you going to beat a price like that? No, thanks. Uh, did you bring the keys? Hang them up for me, will you? i got more grease in my hands than I have in my hair. <laughs> <laughs> Number five. Uh, I wish I could tell you what you're missing. You ought to see me in about a half an hour. I know it'd be fun, but I've got a plane to catch. Thanks, anyway. Rent a car. Oh, hello, Alice. Yeah, I know I didn't come home for dinner. Well, I just didn't have a chance to call you, that's all. No, I'll be working here most of the night. OK, yeah, I'll see you for breakfast. OK. OK. Goodbye. I can close up now. Yeah, I'll be over and pick you up in about 15 minutes. Okay. Good. Bye. bus. If I didn't have to walk home, I never would have passed the place with those flowers. Oh, a fine father I am. I didn't even ask you. How's Christopher? Oh, he is fine, Dominic. Fine. You had something to eat? No, I wasn't hungry. Oh, a father must eat also. Sit down. I will make you some nalishniki. No, Maria, you rest. It's too late to eat pancakes. Quarter to 11, I'm tired. And you are, too. You can make pancakes for me for tomorrow. All right. A 
Costa? Private Dominic McCosta? That's right. Police. I'm not AWOL. I've got my orders. I want to ask you and your wife a few questions. Well, my wife's in bed. Were you near the airport tonight? Yeah. Is this your wallet? Yeah, but how? This wallet was found tonight in a stolen car. Stolen car? And the car was involved in a hit and run accident at 11 o'clock. I was here at 11 o'clock. Anybody see you? My wife? Well, anybody else. Oh, I just got home tonight. Did you wear your uniform tonight? Yeah. This car was stolen from a garage near the airport. The garage man saw a soldier and a girl hanging around the place just before the car was taken. You're a soldier. You admit you were near the airport. Your wallet was found in the car. You added up. But I didn't steal any car. The garage man is at headquarters. You and your wife better get dressed. You both have to let him take a look at you. Okay, Pete, send them in. Dominique, what are they doing to us? It's all right, Maria. He can't say it was us. He can't. Get the wall over here. Line up with him, please. All right, send an Albright. Recognize any of these people? Don't make any identification unless you're positive. I've never seen any of them, Lieutenant. Thanks anyway. Sorry. Wish I could have helped you. You can go. Not you, Macosta. You and your wife stay here. You heard the man. He didn't know us. There's another witness. The old woman who was hit. She will tell you, too. It was not Dominique and me. She will tell you it was another man. Dominique was home with me. Can we go see her now? She's unconscious. But before she went into her coma, she said there was a man and a woman in the car. It wasn't us. How'd your wallet get in the car? Dominic has told you already so many times. He does not know. Well, until we find out, we're holding you. Dominic and Maria were booked on suspicion of car theft and Polonia's hit and run driving. They were photographed, fingerprinted, and put in jail. I was assigned to defend them. With every answer, they protested their innocence. They didn't steal any car. All I know is some girl gave me a lift to the airport. Next thing I know, some guy's arresting me. Why do they do this to Dominic and me? This is the United States. Here, they do not put you in, in jail for nothing. They made a mistake, Maria. Mr. Matthews will get us out. Tell her. I hope so. Uh, Dominic, do you know how your wallet got in that car? I must have dropped it. Then you were in the car. Sure, I thought my way home so I could save the dough. You mean someone gave you a lift? A girl. When we got near the airport, I took my wallet out to show her Maria's picture. And I, I thought I dropped it back in my pocket, but it must have missed. Well, that girl is important. Who is she? I don't know. She didn't tell me her name. Can you describe her? Yeah. Real pretty. Brown hair. Kind of a little nose. Maybe about as old as me. She was going to Chicago. That night? That's how come she left me off at the airport. Well, do you know what plane she took? No. Yeah. Wait a minute. 11 o'clock, she said. You will find her, Mr. Matthews. Well, we might be able to locate her by checking all of the airline passengers for the night, or... Say, wait a minute. The rent-a-car place would have her name. That's right. You see, Maria, it's gonna be okay. Then we can go home, yes? I don't know, but at least... But they cannot keep us here. Dominic and me, we did not do anything. I do not want my baby to be born in jail. That's right, Mr. Matthews. We've got to get us out of here. I'll arrange to have you transferred to the jail hospital. Oh, no. I will not go. I will not have my baby in prison. They cannot make me. We'll do our best. Hello, Frank. I'm Bart. When you're through, I'll take Private McCosta off your hands. Oh, what for? 
The old lady that was hit, she's coming out of her coma. I want her to listen to Macosta. Listen to me? Yeah, she's blind. When they found her, she was still conscious. She said that the car stopped after it hit her. The driver got out and walked over to her, said to somebody, the old dame's blind. She heard a woman's voice, but she doesn't know what she said. She wouldn't be able to recognize her voice. How would this man know so quickly that she was blind? She was still clutching her white cane. Well, we're through here, Frank. Where is the lady? City Hospital. Would you mind if I go along with you? Glad to have you. I'm Detective Bell. You told the policeman you'd be able to recognize the voice of that man in the car. Do you still think you can? Fine. Now, please listen carefully. The old dame is blind. The old dame is blind. We have another man for you to listen to. All right? The old dame is blind. Louder this time. The old dame is blind. No. No, she's wrong. She's wrong. The next morning, I swung by the garage to get the name of that girl. But the relief man couldn't help me. All he could tell me was that Sparky would be back later. So I went to the airport. I quickly learned that the only plane leaving here for Chicago around 11 p.m. was United Airlines flight number 710. When I got to the United counter, I told the young lady my problem. She called the passenger supervisor, a Mr. Bentley, then told me he'd be right out. My name's Bentley. Oh, I'm Bart Matthews, the public. Yes, I recognized you. What can we do for you? Well, a young soldier named Acosta and his wife were arrested this week, charged with car theft and hit-and-run driving. Yeah, I read about it. A young lady gave Acosta a lift on Monday night. She left here for Chicago at 11 o'clock. It's flight 710. We can check that manifest. What's her name? I don't know. But if it's not too much trouble, I'd like to have the name of every female passenger on that flight. Well, we can have that in, say, 15 minutes. Fine. But there may be 20 or 30 names on that list. That's all right. I'm going back to the rent-a-car garage. And if the young lady who returned that car is on your list, we'll know we have the right person. Can I talk to you a minute? Yeah, just a second. I'd like some information, please. Dial 113 for information, please. <laughs> Million laughs this job. Doc, if you're selling something, you're going to have to talk to the guy that owns this joint. I'm just the daytime, nighttime, sleepy time blues manager. I'm Bart Matthews, the public defender. I'm representing Private Macosta. Well, you got a tough job on your hands with that Yankee Doodle soldier boy. But I think I got that one figured out. So a guy comes in town on a furlough. What's he looking for? Oh, a few laughs, a little romance. Vive la France. I know. I used to be in the Army. Loved every minute of it. So this poor slob gloms a car, picks up a dame. They go out and get loaded, and boom, he clobbers his old lady, and they take oh, off. Very interesting. Can you tell me who returned that Ford sedan Monday night just before it was stolen? Well, I can look it up. One thing I like about this job, it's so nice and clean. We've got germs here that even Mayo Clinic hasn't heard about yet. <laughs> that was number five. Now, here we are. Monday was the 21st. 10th, 12th, 17th, 18th. Somebody's giving you a snow job. Car number five was in the pits three days having a valve job for your soldier boy, Glomba. You mean it never left the shop? Not a chance. Uh, thanks. While I was at the garage, Mr. Bentley made a phone call to the flight operations dispatch office, who put these machines to work for us. Into this telemeter control room and into the machines flow the name, address, destination, connecting flights, and other information on every passenger. 
I return to the passenger terminal. Well, how did you make out at the garage? Uh, no luck. I still don't know her name. Well, here's the entire passenger list of flight 710 Monday night. Thanks. Well, I guess I'll have to check all of them. Well, you had one break. Only 16 women on that flight. We could use a few breaks. Oh, and another thing that may help. They're all local people. Can I buy you some coffee? Oh, thanks again, but I'd better start checking this list. Macosta's trial starts tomorrow. While I checked the three women who had returned to the city, requests to trace and question the others were sent by teletype and phone to the various cities the women had gone to. Then we waited. A few hours later, we started to get our answers. One by one, we heard from New York, Boston, Memphis, Columbus, Omaha. Sorry, but there was no such passenger. You're a liar. Oh, Dominic, don't say those things. You blind like the old woman? They know we didn't do anything. Dominic, whenever you think, I'm on your side. Now, my office did check all 16 women passengers on that flight. None of them gave a soldier a lift on the way to the airport. All I know is that a girl gave me a lift in that car. She said she was going to Chicago at 11 o'clock. How do I know if she really went? Maybe she got sick. Maybe she had an accident. Maybe... There were no last-minute cancellations on that flight. So I made it up. The whole thing. I ran over the old girl, and I stole the car. And... Dominic, please. I know it looks like you're being framed, Dominic, but... Looks like it. The police don't operate that way. Dominic, the picture. Give it to Mr. Matthews. Oh, what difference does it make? You think they're going to knock their brains out trying to find one girl out of 160 million people? You'll have the baby in prison. Who cares? Us and we don't count. Dominic, what can it hurt? What picture is she talking about? From all that Dominic had told me. I drew a picture. Of the girl? Well, let's see it. Dominic, please. Does this look like it? Does it? Oh, it's okay. What difference does it make? They've got us now. They ain't gonna let us go. They might if we can find this girl before 2 o'clock tomorrow. Your trial is scheduled for the afternoon session. Who are you kidding if they find this girl? You really want to know how to find her? Put an ad in every paper in the whole world. Maybe she already left Chicago and went to Africa. And you say in the paper, if you look like this, call Dominic Macosta at the city jail. I'll have a telephone put in my cell. Dominic! Macosta, somebody in this case is lying. I don't know, maybe one of the women on the plane had a reason for not wanting to admit that she picked you up. Maybe there is no such girl. I don't know. But I'll tell you this much. I'll do everything I can to find out before 2 o'clock tomorrow. Can you break a 20? Yeah. Whatever happened to Laughing Boy? Who? The gasoline lover. No jokes, no story about a big romance, no... I just talked to my wife and got terrible news. She understands me. Poor girl. <laughs> well, I'm off. See you in a couple of days. Hi. I'd like you to look at this picture. Do you remember any customers that look like this? There must be a million dames that look like that. When you find them, send me a dozen. Then she doesn't look familiar? Look, I never really look at their kissers. All I look at is their dough and their licenses. Sorry. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Mr. Bentley. Oh, how'd you make out? No good. I'd like to ask you another favor. Oh, certainly. Uh, possibly one of you people might remember selling a ticket to this girl or checking her in on Monday night. Is this the girl? I understand it resembles her. Now, incidentally, that list you gave me, that's definitely all of the passengers on that flight, isn't it? All but the crew. Uh, now we can take this picture and show oh, it to... The, the crew. The stewardess. That's right. How many were on that flight? Two. Would you recognize this girl if she was a stewardess? Well, I, I don't know. Two or three hundred fly in and out of here. Well, who worked that flight Monday night? I'll find out. Flight crew desk. Bentley. I'd like to have the names of the stewardesses on 7-10, the 21st. They can look that up in the schedule book. Yeah, Joe. Well, oh, just a minute. Nora Lindell, Jane Morgan. Do you know them? 
But what do they look like? Oh, tall blonde, eh? He doesn't know the Morgan girl, but he's asking some of the other men in the dispatch room. Yeah, Joe. Medium height, pretty, brown hair. That could be the girl. Oh, I beg your pardon, Joe. What did you say? Flight 718 this morning? Thanks. Well, let's take a look at the Morgan girl's picture. And we've got to hurry. She's on a flight leaving for Chicago at 1015. United Flight 718, City of Chicago, now departing from Gate 24. Four. United, United Flight 718, 718, the City of Chicago, City of Chicago, Chicago now, departing now departing from Gate 24. 24. Mm. Request taxi clearance. Over. United 718 cleared for taxi to runway 25 left. United 718, City of Chicago, now departing gate 24. United 718, City of Chicago, now departing gate 24. That looks like the same girl. Can I talk to her? Well, I'll see when she's due back. Can't we get her before she leaves? Oh, I doubt it. Ramp supervisor. Oh, was 718 cleared yet? Oh, thank you. It's left the ramp, but it's still on the field. Well, the McCosters go on trial this afternoon. Without that girl, they don't stand a chance of an acquittal. Ramp supervisor. I don't know if we can catch it. Now, this is Bentley. Will you please request the control tower for permission to return 718 to the ramp? Emergency request for the public defender. Thanks. Now, when every second is important, you learn how complex an operation a large airline is, how many people it takes to get a plane into the sky, and, in this case, how many people it takes to try to keep one on the ground. going with it. United 718, this is LA Tower. Company requests you return to field immediately. Let's hope she's the right girl. Well, if she is, I'll get a reserve stewardess to make the trip. When confronted by Jane Morgan and the true story of car number five, Sparky quickly lost his smart aleck attitude and confessed. That's her. That's the girl, Mr. Matthews. It's her. Yes, Mr. Matthews. He's the one I picked up. Oh, oh thank you, Mr. Matthews. Oh, it's Dominique. Oh. They're too busy to thank you, so I'll do it for them. You're very welcome. As a result of the identification by Miss Morgan, Dominic and Maria McCosta were released. Under police questioning, Sparky Albright confessed to driving the hit-and-run car. He was sent to prison. Oh, yes, I almost forgot. Maria's baby is named Christopher Matthews McCosta. Now, the case you have just seen was brought to a fair and just conclusion through the efforts of a public defender. Tonight, Revlon salutes public defender Gerald W. Getty, Cook County, Chicago, Illinois, and his staff for outstanding achievement in the cause of justice.